Good afternoon, everybody. I thought I'd do a quick little update on um, what I've been working on. I know I've posted a couple of videos over the last uh, two weeks, just kind of quick little things because I didn't have a chance to do something a little bit more in depth. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you some of the progress I've made and do a quick unboxing of a couple of things that I'm really, really happy uh, that have shown up in the mail. So first, I'll do the unboxing real quick. Uh, the first thing, I love the Renaissance period. And there is a 10 millimeter company called Warmonger Miniatures. And I'll put a link to their site uh, in the description when I post the video. Uh, they did a they have done a series of Kickstarters for their 10 millimeter Renaissance figures. And the most recent one was for their first set of cavalry. Let's see if I can get this so you can actually see it. Maybe get the glare off of it. Um, their stuff is nicely sculpted. Actually, get it so you can see it here a little bit. Just try uh, zooming in. Maybe that'll help. There you go. A little bit better. Um, I think it was in October. They did a Kickstarter for their first set of cavalry, which is a uh, ten millimeter. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, reader or writer uh, forces. So um, one pack had, what do we got here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve figures in it. I bought eight packs from them. Standard bear. Dude with a lance. Oops. Get him in shot so you can actually see what I'm doing here. The detail on their figures is wonderful. Um, I have painted up uh, several of their uh, pikemen and everything else. And uh, they, they just paint up so easily. The detail is so well done. And they mix pretty well with... Uh, Oh Glory and Pendragon. So uh, they're, these are a little bit beefier than Pendragon, so I wouldn't put them on the same base. But for an army, uh, they work pretty well. So I picked up uh, eight bags. So it should be more than enough to field um, cavalry for both sides that I'm building up for my Renaissance figures. And for that, I'm doing uh, essentially... Spanish, French, Holy Roman Emperor, you know, all those fun things. Uh, the other thing, now this is going to be, for me, a kind of a first. Let's see if I can get it back into focus here. There we go. Um, I picked this up off of eBay for about $20. And this is going to be my first uh, Verlinden Productions figure that I'm going to do. Um, I've always seen these in hobby stores, things like that. And I was always afraid to buy them because the detail was so good. There's so much of it. There's so much to paint. There's, there's so much. But I think I'm finally into a spot where I think I can actually handle painting it. Um, I'll show you what the back of the figure looks like. And as some of you may or may not know, uh, these are very well casted. They're all very well done. Let's see if I can get something out of here. So that's the front of the tunic. 
I'm back. You can see some absolutely wonderful detail in here for uh, painting. So this is going to be probably a labor of love and take me a while to actually do. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing this. Um, let's see if I can get... The detail on the gentleman's cowl and his face is just wonderful. Hopefully I can do it some justice when I actually paint it and he'll look human when I'm finished with it. Uh, not scared at all about actually having to paint this, but we'll see what happens. But I will keep you updated on progress for that. Let's get that out of the way. Um... So if you remember over Christmas, I uh, received a 1 48th scale night. So I primed it and I have started to paint that. And I have to say, I did find, if nobody's tried this, this AK True Metal is a wonderful product. It's um, actually made with uh, beeswax. So you can actually polish the metal when you're done painting it. Once it dries, it um, dries a little bit faster than an enamel, but you have to use like an enamel thinner to use it. Uh, but the, this true metal actually polishes up. This is the silver, which is what I used on that night. Uh, and it looks fantastic when it's done and you get done polishing it. Uh, just to also show you, um, my 1 16th scale night, I've started to edge the armor and everything else in a little bit of gold. I think some of the shading on the upper body has turned out pretty well. I just have to finish up the belt on him. I think the lower part of his body is actually coming along pretty well. I think um, I just have a few straps to finish here and I think I'll be done. I think this is turning out pretty well, which is better than uh, what I thought because I've never actually painted something this large before. His arms, again, some edging with gold. Uh, you can see in here some of the chain mail. And again, a few extra straps that I have to go back in and paint. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, and I have to finish up his shield. Now, it did come with decals. I have been reading on the uh, internet about this particular kit and that the decals are very, very brittle. So I'm going to have to see how that works out. Hopefully, they won't fall apart on me when I try to use them. Uh, if you remember from a few videos back, I had received this English Civil War, 30 Years War, uh, horse and rider from Historicon. It was for signing up early and uh, I was able to bring it home. So I've gotten those painted. I think the horse actually turned out really, really well. Um, I painted it all with the oils. Even the... the chimpanzee that he's holding on his arm I think actually turned out pretty well uh, the rider himself I think turned out pretty pretty good uh, I was thinking about trying to update some of the uh, embroidery work that's on the saddle itself but um, I've decided not to I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is because I think it looks good like that and sometimes the embossing, I don't think, uh, like I've seen different styles of it, so I've just decided to leave it in its basic color. Um, some of you have seen my Renaissance pikeman. He is pretty much done, although I do have to clean up the pommel of the uh, sword and then uh, find a wire pike to add to it, but that's pretty much done.
my seven uh seven years war my war of spanish succession drummer that i started painting i think this one turned out pretty well as as well Again, uh, this was painted with um, enamels as a base and then oils over the top of that. And then I uh, started on with a little bit bigger unit. So started painting up this gentleman for the Warner Spanish Succession. Uh, it's just a uh, command figure. So he is not quite done. I still have the hair to paint. I still have some more detail and some more uh, highlighting and things like that to do with this figure. Another drummer. This is the drummer for uh, the Spanish unit called the Old Yellows. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce it in Spanish because I'll just butcher it. But... I still have the drum to do. I have more highlighting, more detail work to add to this. Um, you'll notice, let's see if I can get it up here and it'll actually focus maybe. Uh, maybe not. Um, I tried uh, a different way to paint the flesh and... I still have some practice to do. I'm not happy with the way it turned out. I think I over blended it at this point. So, but they may end up staying that way. It's just a learning process. So I'll just give you a quick shot of some of the other troops that I'm working on for that particular unit. So these are the old yellows, old yellows, Spanish unit for the war of Spanish succession. So essentially like a, Sergeant or NCO or whatever they called them and a musket truman. Again, still some highlighting, some extra uh, work to do on these before these are finished. But I thought I'd just show you the progress on them. Uh, and I think they're actually turning out pretty well. Again, these were painted primarily with oil paint. I still have the hair to paint and a few other things on here. Um, if I can turn my camera a little bit, there's the rest of that unit that I'm painting. And what I decided to try to do is, uh, when I decided to paint this unit was try to paint it, um, as a batch doing batch painting, just to see how that worked and how that worked with, um, uh, oil paints. The other thing that I've been practicing with is, like I had mentioned with one of the other figures, is painting flesh and trying to come down with a nice, easy technique that I can replicate each and every time that I do it. Um, I have another figure that I started painting. Again, another, these are all foundry figures, uh, another Warrior Spanish Succession figure. I have like a colonel or general, whatever I decide. and. I'm practicing how to get the flesh colors the way I want it to. Again, I think on this one, I also over blended a little bit too much with this. So I still have some practice to do. Uh, I am by no means a expert at this. Um, I did go out and buy uh, some cheap 54 millimeter World War II figures from my local hobby store and just kind of tried to paint some flesh on them. I primed them gray and took some flesh uh, mixes and started to paint with them. Obviously, this guy turned out a little bit darker than I had wanted, and this one's a little bit not quite, I don't know, it's kind of an off coffee kind of looking color. So, practice. That's about all I have for today. Um, I do have more uh, 10 millimeter War of Spanish Succession troops that um, I need to go prime, which I'm going to go do after I get done uh, doing this video. Uh, have another two sets of 
10 millimeter figures that will be going up on the analog uh, painting challenge. Uh, hopefully that will get posted on Friday. Then I can show you some photos of that. Uh, those figures are done. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope everybody is having a great first uh, part of the year. We're halfway through January already, which is kind of amazing. And I wish everybody a lot of love and peace, and I hope everything is going well in your lives. Again, uh, if you have any suggestions about, um, like, painting flesh, uh, you know, uh, anything like that, please leave them in the comments. Um, like the video. Uh, I will answer questions if you have any. On, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. So, please... Uh, you know, subscribe if you aren't a subscriber already, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon, and I'll try to get up another video uh, next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.